Good morning. I'm Mr. Steve. I'm here to tell you another story from the Bible. Last week, I told you about an incident involving somebody who made peace in a difficult situation. And we're going to talk about another story just like that again. I'm sure you've heard of David from the Old Testament. He's probably one of the most famous people in the Old Testament. He was chosen by God to be the next king of Israel when he was still just a young shepherd. God promised that one day David would be king. But in the meantime, King Saul was the ruler of Egypt. Now, in this story, David plays a central role, but he's actually about to make a big mistake, and a surprising peacemaker bails him out in a surprising way. David won battles and was very popular with the people of Israel. This made Saul very jealous. So Saul kept trying to capture or hurt David. So David and his men spent a lot of time living on the run. They had to move around a lot to hide from Saul and his armies. This wasn't easy for David, but it was what he had to do to live on and eventually become king. Well, one spring in their travels, David and his men went down to the desert of Paran. They traveled near the land of a wealthy man named Nabal. Now, Nabal was not a nice man. In fact, Nabal was very rude and mean. On the other hand, his wife, who was named Abigail, was very wise and intelligent. Now, when David and his men first showed up, they didn't see Nabal, but they did run into Nabal's servants. And Nabal's servants weren't all sure what to think about David and his men, and they didn't know if they could trust him. But David's men didn't do anything mean. They didn't steal from Nabal's men. And in fact, David protected Nabal's shepherds from harm. Now, in the spring, it's time for the sheep to get their fleece cut so that it can be made into wool. It's kind of like a haircut for sheep. When, it's, when it is done, it's called sheep shearing time, and it's really a time for celebration. During that time, David asked 10 of his men to go speak to Nabal and let them know that they were there peacefully. David told them the following. He said, go up to Nabal at Carmel. Greet them for me. Say to him, may you live a long time. May everything go well with you and your family. And may things go well with everything that belongs to you. David told the men to remind Nabal that they'd been good to his shepherds and sheep. He said, when your shepherds were with us, we treated them well. The whole time they were at Carmel, nothing that belonged to them was stolen. Ask your own servants. They'll tell you. We've come now at a happy time of the year. Please be kind to my men. Please give me and my men anything you can find for us. Seems pretty reasonable. David was hoping that his men could join the celebration, but Nabal said no. And furthermore, he didn't even say it nicely. I mean, seriously. David and his men had been kind to Nabal's servants, but Nabal had refused to give them anything in return. Now, here's where the story starts getting interesting. When David's men returned and told David what Nabal had said, David was angry. About 400 men with, of David's men went with him, 
looking for Nabal and looking for a fight. Now, Nabal's servants could see that this was not heading in the right direction. So one of them told Abigail, remember Nabal's wife, Abigail, about what Nabal had done and what was going down. Now, Abigail knew that she had to do something to help. She figured that if she made a gift for David, she could convince him to back down, turn back, instead of going after Nabal. So, Abigail gathered supplies, loaded them on donkeys. She gathered bread, cake, wheats, and grains. She told the servants to go ahead to David and his men and that she would follow them. When Abigail got to David and his men, they were marching through a mountain valley, and she could tell that David was hugely annoyed. He was angry. So Abigail got off her donkey and bowed before David. She then took the blame herself. She said, Please don't pay any attention to what that evil man, Nabal, his name means foolish person. And that's exactly what he is. He's always doing foolish things. I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to see the men that you sent. Sir, the Lord has kept you from killing Nabal and his men. He has kept you from using your own hands to get even. So may what's about to happen to Nabal happen to all your enemies. May it happen to everyone who wants to harm you. And may it happen just as surely as the Lord your God and you are alive. Everyone wondered, what was David going to do? Nabal had insulted him, but Abigail showed honor to him. Would that be enough to keep the peace? Abigail continued, the Lord your God will surely give you and your family line a kingdom that will last. That's because you fight the Lord's battles. The Lord will do for you every good thing he promised to do. He'll appoint you ruler over Israel. When that happens, you won't have this heavy load on your mind. You won't have to worry about how you killed people without any reason. You won't have to worry about how you got even. The Lord your God will give you success. When that happens, please remember me. Abigail stood there waiting to hear what David was going to say. After a moment, David smiled and said, Give praise to the Lord. He is the God of Israel. He has sent you today to find me. May the Lord bless you for what you have done. You have kept me from using my own hands to get even. Abigail had made a stand. She'd saved the day. She kept David from doing something that was truly, really bad. David accepted Abigail's gifts and told her to go home in peace. In the end, Nabal died. He paid a high price for his foolish and angry response to David. But God blessed Abigail. She had chosen to humble herself and do the hard work of making peace. Abigail understood that you can show you care about others by being a part of the solution. Now, Abigail wasn't the one who caused the problem. She wasn't involved in the fight. But she got involved so that she could make peace. She chose to be part of the solution. That's what makes her the hero in this story. God wants us to be peacemakers with our friends, our family members, and anyone else who might come into conflict. Later on in the New Testament, we know the words of Jesus from the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus said, God blesses those who work for peace, for they will be called the children of God. In all this, Abigail's actions prevented David from making a huge mistake because she was working for peace 
and trying to do what God would want someone to do.